Hey everybody, it's Joel from The Board Game Mechanics. We are winners of the 2018 My Mom's Choice Award from my mom, who gave me that award. It's on like construction paper, it's pretty nice. Um, we didn't win any awards last year, but we just started last year, and I don't know that we would have won any awards anyway, because we're pretty okay. That's our kind of <laughs> slogan. Pretty okay. Um, but what do we do? We mostly do a podcast. So uh, if you like podcasts, maybe go to the link in the notes down below, www.bgmechanics.com uh, to check out our website and find our podcast and all the other video things we do, our, our social media. Um, hook up with us there. We are just, you know, we're fans of having fans. So it's really great to connect with you guys over there. Uh, anyway, enough that I had to do a commercial for us. I mean, like, we're, I want to grow the thing. So I had to give you guys a commercial. I know you weren't here for that, but we're going to go ahead and go on to Newton now. Uh, so Newton, cool game. Let's get right to the table and talk about the basics of this game before I give you some thoughts on it. Let's do that now. This is Newton, and right off the bat, we can see that it has a big table presence. It takes a lot of real estate up, but it is modular, so you can set it up in a variety of ways to make it fit your table better, make it fit the arms that are reaching for different things better. Uh, let's take a look here at setup, I guess, to start with. We'll start off with the two main boards. This is the world board where your main scientist is going to travel. There's basically uh, three different things that can happen on this board uh, that are specific to this board. You can go to cities, which are these square areas, which are going to give you different benefits. You can go to universities, which basically you're going to leave a tile on a university in order to be able to, um, in order to bas basically be able to say that you've gone there. And then the same thing with ancient lands. And that's going to be a part of like almost a set collection thing that we're doing in order to put books on our bookshelf on our player board. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, the next one's the tech tree. This tech tree here, uh, it's going to give us a chance to move these scientists up and through these different trees in order to get benefits. There's basically three things that are going to happen on this as well. There's specialties that we can do. There are inventions that we can create. And there are... Um, I think they're called master master spaces where you once your science, once your student becomes a master, they give you some kind of in-game scoring typically. We have a market of cards. And if we look at this market of cards, there's three areas. There's the one hats, the two hats, and the three hats. Uh, depending on the level of the cards that you want, the three hats are better than the one hats, uh, and the twos are in the middle somewhere. Uh, finally, there's a player board. So let's talk about that player board setup real quick here. The player board, we have a bookshelf on the top, and then we have a desk area below the bookshelf. Uh, the desk area is going to be really important to us. That's where we're going to be putting cards down in order to do things. And then also there's going to be some permanent benefits that hang out with us there. Um, so that's that's important. But when we do set up here, we're going to have stacks of three books. And I have a book on there. I'm kind of cheating. There's three. There's four, four stacks of three books there. And then these travel cubes, like I talked about earlier, we're going to leave those behind as we travel. This isn't going to be on there. This is an addition that would have happened as we played the game. But every player board does have a unique uh, starting token on there or starting symbol on there. that's going to allow you to do a specific kind of action slightly better than the other players. So that maybe is a good place to start to figure out what you're going to try and accomplish and do. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at the different kinds of tiles that can come out and the kinds of benefits that happen as we're going through the game. I think that makes sense to do that next. Um, Let's go ahead and look up here at the world map. The world map um, is pretty simple, really. You're just going to travel places. The only the only thing that you're going to run into. Let's go ahead and zoom down on that a little bit here for you guys. Uh, I think that would make it make it so you guys can see a little better. Let's go ahead and go like that, maybe. Um, the only thing that's going to be a, a slightly interesting mechanism about this is going to be if you travel between a couple spots. Sometimes you do have to pay coins. Uh, but otherwise, you're going to basically get what it says. The lightning bolt means an instant effect. Uh, if there's not a lightning bolt, then it means that it's something that's going to happen, uh, you know, permanently. Um, but most things are just instant effects that you get immediately. So as I'm moving around the board, let's say I stop here. Well, I take one of my yellow cubes. I go from right to left, starting with the top row, and I leave a yellow cube there. I only leave a yellow cube there if I stop there. So I did stop there. Um, now, I might want to go to Napoli next, but look, there's no connection there, unfortunately. So when you go to Napoli, you have to go two spaces to get there. Um, the other thing, too, that is on both these boards that I haven't mentioned yet are these little circles here. Uh, these guys here 
are, let's see if I can get that to focus for you guys. Uh, these little, these little tokens here, they give you like just a like one time quick effect. The thing that's different about those than the other stuff is that you can pass by those and get them. But also once you take that, you pull it off the board, you're the only person to get that effect. So it's kind of a like first person to do that thing kind of bonus. Uh, those exist both on the tech board and the world board. So let's take a look now at the tech board. The tech board has actually two tracks on it. The top track up there where those two discs are is the work track. This is where you're going to do work actions and there's a coin on every one of the spots. Each one of the spots is going to give you a coin as you advance through it. So that's how you're going to make a lot of money. It also has the specialty spots on it as well, which follow the same rules as everything else. You must stop there in order to get the benefit from it. So on this one, let's take a look at this tile right here. This is a really important tile for us to take a look at. This is one of the ones that was on the, uh, this was on the, on the tech track there. So this right here just basically says that you're going to take one of the little player tile thingies, uh, player tile thingies, that's the technical name for it. Uh, you're going to take one of these little cardboard pieces here and place it onto your desk. So let's go ahead and do that now. And that was for a technology. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go down to the player board. It makes sense to do that now. And put that on there. That's the benefit I got. So to start off, I'm not going to actually show you that. Uh, on there because I want to show how this would work when you're initially playing the game. So let's go ahead and see if we can zoom out a little bit here. Um, so what's going to happen at the core of this game are two sets of cards that you have. One set of cards you have are these master cards. And so as you advance scientists through the game, you're going to become these great scientists or these great scientists are going to sponsor one of your students because they think so highly of them. Um, but this is going to give you, again, the lightning, instant benefit, three potions, allow you to get another student that you're working with. This is a permanent two green books, which is important for the set collection aspects of the game. And then this is six coins that you just get instantly. So these guys, as I reach the end of the tech trees with my students, they allow me to activate them. So more on that in a bit, but I think that'll make sense as we're playing the game. Um, this is my hand of cards I start off with. So basically I'm doing action selection with this game um, to a degree, almost like worker placement, but like done with cards. So I have choices here. Let's go through my different choices I have to play down cards. We'll start off with this one. This one is called Work. Work is that track up there where I get coins. I already talked about it. If I played this card down onto my board, I get to do a work. And since there's one of that action that is, that is present there, I get to do a level one work action. Uh, so basically that means one symbol there. I get to move up on that track one spot. Let's go ahead and zoom down a little on this so you get a better idea. Uh, the next one I'm going to say, and then again, work. We talked about that track already. We pretty well know that. This is the tech. So look at this. I'm a really good tech guy, right? I have a tech built in. So if I played that card down, I would get to move two on that tech track. So let's go back up to the tech track and talk about movement on that tech track just a little bit more so you get a better feel for that. These, these students I have, I have an additional three students that I can put out on the board over the course of the game. You start with one, though. And when you do a tech action, you can only move one student. You can only move one direction. And you, can only, you can't break your movement up. There's, there's a very special, specific way that you can break up your movement that only happens rarely with one of those master cards. Otherwise, you're moving one direction, moving forward. So, scientist, I got, to, I got a level two on my tech. These aren't scientists, these are students. My scientist is in my world board. I get to move him two spots. So one, two, nothing really happens for me there. If I had a bonus there that I landed on, I would get to take it. But I'm trying to work him up to get some of these one-time effect tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to show you guys real quick. Let's zoom way down on this. These little, these little squares here, I want to make sure you see that. These are what they call income markers, or you get basically to take an income marker. So let's go down and take a look at these income markers. There's a stack of them down here in the corner. And they basically give me a certain kind of income between rounds. So the, the one on the upper row there is two victory points. That's the victory point symbol. The other one gives me a potion, which we haven't even talked about potions yet, but they're a really neat little thing in this game too. And then there's two coins that you can get as well at the at between rounds. So when we think about the end of a round and we're calculating our income for points, those would also go into our boards and we immediately get them. There's no criteria to always get those. We always get them immediately starting with the round that we got them in. So there's no, I have to have a set or anything like that to get them. They just start happening. They start popping into the board. They start popping up for us immediately. So those are really good to get. And again, another one of these tiles where it's like you get to add 
a, a different little cardboard chip thing to your board. That's kind of neat too. Uh, anyway, I'm going to pan back out because I think the, the uh, resolution is terrible when I do that. So um, back to the player board. Tech tree. That's what we did in there. Uh, next up, we're going to look at traveling. So traveling is this compass. So this card is a little different looking, as you can see. There's a blue book on the top and then a compass on the bottom. The bottom indicates, hey, this is the action that is going to be happening when I play this down. The top is just a symbol there. It's a symbol for set collection for later in the game. And I think we'll get more into that here in a second, and you'll understand that as we do this. The next one we have is we do, do a lesson. Take a lesson. So when we take a lesson, that allows me to buy cards from these markets. Since I only have one hat symbol present, I can only buy from that one hat area, which is over here. Now you'll notice I have a gap in there between these sets of cards. And that's because of the quick actions, which we'll get to in a second. But this is gonna allow me to buy one of these three cards. Now I get an additional card with these symbols in the bottom of them, potentially, um, but I also get the top benefit as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom down a little so I don't have to pull these up one at a time to look at them. Uh, up a little, there we go. Uh, so this just allows me to have a blue book in my set collection, a green book in my set collection, and this gives me one victory point whenever I play that card which this early in the game would be really powerful, really good to have. The other thing too is these is that, uh, the other thing that we need to remember is that these cards go immediately into our hand. So as I pick this card, it's not like a, like a deck builder where I have to put in my discards. I get to use this card right away and my next action could be using that. So um, there's a possibility I could do another work here and get some more money if I wanted to do that. Um, but I also, I like this card because it has that victory point thing on there. So I think I would take this card. So I put that into my hand and that's what I do when I take a lesson, which is that hat action. Uh, finally, I have one more spot left. So the round of a game is when I fill in all of those spots for cards there. So I have left in my hand, I have three choices. This is, this is putting a book on my bookshelf, which may not be a bad idea. And actually, that's how you get points. So that's probably what I'll end up doing. This is like a wild, it's like a jester, I think it's what they call it. It's a wild, it basically lets you do whatever you wanna do that's on the board. Uh, at the level that would be there. So like if I wanted to do another tech, I could put this down and say I'm going to do tech. And then look, this counts as one, two, three. So I'd do a three tech action. I can move my student up three spots. And then again, I have the hat again, but I'd get one victory point right away. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I am going to go ahead and do this because I want to put a book down and that's how I'm going to score points. So I need to do that. So I'm going to take one of my books off of here. I'm going to place it under my board. Um, hmm. So let's see here. Um, I think I would, I only, I only have the green book and the blue book on my set collection here. I really haven't visited any place that's effective for me to, to visit yet. I did go here, but that's a level two for me to file that. So I can't do that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this here. The reason why I'm choosing that is because I'm working on this row, but also there's a chance I could get this column filled in. So every full column and every full row is going to score you the points indicated on the bottom at between rounds. So we're at that between round spot now. Let's just go ahead and pretend that I got one of these little income markers and it's sitting right here. There's no arrow to it. That's a free income spot. So I would immediately get a potion. Um, this is also a good chance for me to talk about quick actions too because of potions. Quick actions are these right here. And let's take a look at them. For one coin, I'm allowed to flip two other cards out. So that's where I was talking about earlier where it's good to leave a gap in that row of cards. What I'm going to basically be able to do is I'm going to be allowed to um, I'm going to be allowed to flip two additional choices out if I pay a coin. If I pay two coins, I'm going to be able to bump the level up of what I wanted to do. So I could have paid two coins and done that book action and filled in that one in the second row. The the three coins allows me to buy a potion. Five coins allows me to get another student working. Then on the back side, it shows me what potions do, which is really neat. So potions, what do they do? Well, one potion allows me to have a wild card or like be able to ignore one of the requirements of a book in my set. The other one allows me to pay three and then it allows me to fill in a spot that I haven't met the criteria for. So a place I haven't really visited yet or anything. So um, I'm going to keep filling books in. In between rounds, I'm going to calculate points for every row and column I fill in. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all these cards off, but then I'm going to choose one of the cards that I just played and I'm going to tuck it under my player board. And that's going to help me keep track of rounds for one thing but it's also going to help me to get better at the game. So this one, I don't really want to tuck it because it's green on the top and I need green books, but I am going to tuck it because I need to get better at studying and, or taking lessons. 
And I took another lesson card. If you remember, I bought this lesson card. So I think I would play this lesson card down first every time because it has one victory point I immediately get. So I'd play it down, and then I would get to buy the better cards too. So that second row of cards there, second set of cards is slightly better than the first. The third's better than that. I want to just take a quick look at scoring here real quick uh, at this point. So this is just going to show you how we score this. Uh, these books are getting filled in by doing different things. So I traveled. I got to put a book there by taking that action. And as I fill in this column, I get these victory points between rounds. And I filled in this column, so I get these victory points as well. I also could get some for rows. I have not filled a row in yet, but I would get those for the rows. And then I want to just talk about this freebie spot here. I get that as well. So as I fill these freebies in, there's no criteria to get those points and those benefits. So um, pretty cool that that's how you score. Fairly simple, honestly. Um, just trying to fill in rows and columns to get those victory points, and that happens every round. Uh, one of the components that's kind of cool, this apple, first player marker, Newton's apple, kind of cool. Um, another thing that happens between rounds is we clear those cards out. We put new cards out, refresh those. We keep doing that until we fill up all these spots here. So as the game goes, we're going to keep tucking these underneath there. And look how much better I'm getting at doing it, all these different actions. And I probably would have acquired really great cards. So over the course of the game, I'm playing things more like this. That's going to let me do work, have a blue book, and get one coin. Or I'm going to have an opportunity to put a book on there. Um, and then do a second one with I, if I pay three coins to do that. So I get to put extra books out. This is a book of my choice. It's a wild card book that could have gone out. Um, this one just says, man, if you pay two coins, you get three points. Pretty great. This one's pay a potion, get a victory point and two coins. So, I mean, all these different kinds of better cards are going to come out and allow me to be better at what I'm doing. Uh, one final thing I want to talk about are those in-game master spaces. So, one thing that has has to happen is that you move your guys to their end locations. So these guys keep traveling and they have an end location. So the end location has this like double line there that you really can't see very well because of the board coloring. But in real life, you can see it pretty well. Um, but you get to that double line where it's the end of the road. They never go backwards. They get to the end. Once they reach the end, they're done. But when you reach the end, you get to do um, some scholarship. So um, that's that's good. Um the uh, the other thing, too, is that in order for me to go into this space, there's set collection on that as well. You can see that that one needs three orange books and one blue book. So um, I would need to have that present on my desk in order for me to go in there. And then my potions are going to be worth two points at the end of the game. Um, that's a rough idea of how to play the game. I, I think that you're going to have a good start on, on the rules. You're still going to want to read through the rules, probably. There's some stuff I just kind of skimmed over or didn't mention at all. Um, but I wanted to have a baseline of knowledge for you as I talk about what I like about this game and what I think of it overall. Newton, that was the game Newton right there. Um, you get an idea, I think, of the game from that. I, I spent quite a bit of time trying to explain it. I don't feel like still even that's a full rules overview. I think there's still stuff that I skimmed over, but hopefully that's a good baseline for you to understand what this game's about. Maybe you'll get an idea of if you'd like it even from that like explanation. Um, but there's better playthroughs. Rado has one that's great. Big fan of Rado here at Board Game Mechanics. Um, and, and so, I mean, I'm not trying to send you away before I give you thoughts, but that's a good playthrough if you want more of that. Um, so I am going to give you some thoughts now. What do I think of this game? I really did like it. And I think you can tell that from my just enthusiasm with the, uh, the rules explanation. And just at this point in the video, I'm just going to say I do like it. So uh, how much do I like it, though? Ah, I'm going to save that for later. you got to stick around for that. Let's go ahead and take a look at this, what I think about it right now. The pros and the cons. The pros. The first pro is that I think this game gives us a really good, um, like, productive, fun feeling. So it feels like at the beginning of the game, you can't do a whole lot. You're just kind of, maybe I can move one space. Maybe I can take a card that's not much better than what I have in my hand. But by the end of the game, you're able to, especially what you specialized in, just make that, make that engine work for you. You're able to take what you want to take, basically. And do just really great actions with this with this uh, like set of mechanics that you have. It's it's kind of cool. It feels like this game almost feels like an instrument you're learning to play. That you're like, oh, okay, here's how I do this part, and here's how I do this part. It's just it gives you a satisfying like I've learned this thing kind of feeling too. Um, but just a very very much a fun productive game. And by the end of the game, you're being so much more productive than you were at the beginning. So like basically, you're able to just like I said, do what you want to do. Get just much more powerful. Um, it almost feels like an RPG game and that you're like leveling up. So it's 
it's pretty cool in that way. Um, this is a really good medium plus weight game. It's my favorite of 2018, so I'm kind of spoiling my rating on this a little bit. But my top 100 games came out on the podcast recently. This wasn't on it because it didn't get reviewed by me in time. But had I reviewed it, this certainly would have been my top 100 games. I um, mean, I will go ahead and say this. If you go over there and figure out where Coimbra was, um, this one's better than Coimbra to me. Um, I like Coimbra perfectly great. This one's better than it. Um, this game's just awesome. And it's just so cool because it's not, I mean, the game doesn't feel unique from other games. It doesn't feel like it does anything super innovative. I mean, like using card play to do actions is things that we've seen like with like Mombasa and just different stuff like that. And then being able to um, like keep powering things up, like basically draft Drafting these cards from the ones I used to put into a permanent tableau, that's been done before too. But just the way how it's done in this game is different. And then that set collection thing, not new. I mean, the idea that I need a set collection to put a chit down to mark that I've done something, not new. Traveling along a map, I mean, we've seen that in like a ton of games where you travel along a map and you're trying to get, you know, like a, a series of cities that you visited, get more points and get more benefits. We've seen that as well. Tech trees. People going through tech trees, we've seen that. But this one, all those together and how it does it, feels different. It even has like I it's crazy to say, but this one does have like feels of like a feaster game, like Great Western Trailer Mombasa in it, along with the kind of like best parts of this this designer's uh like other works, like Marco Polo. Like there's feels of Marco Polo in this game too. So if you like those three games I just mentioned, absolutely this game is for you. You will really like it. Uh so uh the mini pass to victory thing is kind of a result that comes from these mechanics all being there and being present. So sometimes it feels like you have a game with many paths to victory where the mechanics don't go together. Um, like there's been Feld games that didn't resonate with me because it felt like all the different parts of the game were just kind of disconnected and ajar from each other. Um, this isn't that kind of point salad thing. What you do in all the different little components and different areas of the boards helps the other areas as well. So there's like one thing that they're all coming back to that's making you have a better player board have a better chance to do actions and things. So all the parts work together, but they're all independent and they all lead to victory. All the victory points basically come from the same thing though. They all come from putting those books on that bookshelf. How you want to get about doing that? There's a lot of choices. You could say, I'm going to get a ton of potions and then I don't have to worry about, you know, visiting cities on this map. Or I can try and get these, these uh, bonuses that allow me to put cubes from places I've never been. So, I mean, like you can do that kind of thing. Um, Am I going to ignore this, the students or am I going to use the students to try and get points off that? Am I going to worry about money? Am I not going to worry about money? All these are different choices that you kind of have to look at that variable player setup and variable board setup that you have in front of you and say, okay, what's the best way to utilize what's been done for me? What's the best way to take the things that have happened um, and make them just a positive thing for me and make it click for me so that I can get the most points out of this? Um, so being able to do that in this game, I think is really fun. Really cool. Um, and then I say this is a great spin on worker placement. It's not entirely worker placement, but it kind of feels like worker placement. Put that card down, and then it feels like you're putting a worker in that spot, kind of, you know? So it's the idea of like picking the work you're gonna do. You do it with the cards in this one, which using the cards allows for some freedom and flexibility to like power things up and then have a permanent benefit that sticks around. So I think that true worker placement couldn't accomplish what this game does with the card play that you put the cards down, but it's not much more complicated than worker placement. Time. So um, it's just neat. It's really neat. And the fact that my placements and my work that I do are custom from someone else's deck they built with that top half of the card having the uh, like little bonus that I get, the benefit I get. So like, let's say I drop this card down. I not only go to the tech tree, but I get a victory point now. That's something no one else gets because I have that card. No one else has that card. So that's pretty neat as well. Cons on this. I have two minor cons on this one. One, it takes a little while to set this game up. So not forever. Once you've done it a couple times, you know what to do. Bam, 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 bam. Put these shapes, match them up, put all these things out. But it does take a while. I mean, you're going to need to spend 10 minutes probably setting this game up. Maybe not quite if you're fast, but it's around 10 minutes to set this game up. And people are going to be setting their player boards up while you're doing this as well. So it's not like all downtime. It's going to take them a couple minutes to set their player boards. But then beyond that, you have to teach the game then due to new players. So 10 minutes to set the game up then probably another 15 minutes or so to teach the game. So you're looking at maybe 25 minutes of just setup and, and just teaching time before you get to play it. This is something that if I'm going to play this game with people, 
I want it to be people that I play with regularly enough that they're going to learn this game and be able to help me set the game up and keep playing it with me. This isn't something that I'm going to bring in people that I play with on the periphery uh, with that I play, you know, hey, I played this game. I play games with you twice a year. This may not be a game I'm going to bring out with those people. Um, maybe it is. It's that good. But those are the cons I can think of that it does take a little while to set up. It's a little bit not fiddly even really because once you set it up, you don't have to mess with stuff much. Um, but it just takes a while to set up and it takes a while to teach. So I think my little like table explanation thing there ended up being like 16 minutes long or so. Um, that takes a while and I didn't even cover all the rules. I kind of skimmed over some stuff. So that's where I'm at with it. Those are the only cons I have. So where am I at with my pros and my cons? Well, I am going to say this fella is at five out of five wrenches, which is, I've never done that before. I've never given a game in my reviews five out of five wrenches. This is a game that based on our wrench system, which means five out of five wrenches is nearly all gamers should own this game and zero or one is like nobody should own it. This one's at that five out of five. I think that probably nine out of 10 people who are into Euro games, who are into playing games where you do worker placement, those kind of cute pushing type games are really going to enjoy this game. And I think it's going to have a place in most people's club. I think that it's unique enough from kind of some other great games that I love. Like I mentioned earlier, Voyages, Marco Polo, Great Western Trail. But it's familiar enough. It hits kind of the same, uh, you know, like neuro paths in my brain. And it makes me kind of have the same feelings in a different package. It's going to be a, just a, just a, I think it's going to be a, a, a evergreen perennial game that is just going to stay in my collection probably forever. I don't foresee this one getting replaced by anything. I think that this is just an amazing game. I don't think it really replaces anything else, though. I don't think it's going to take Great Western Trail out of my collection. I don't think it's going to take Voyages of Marco Polo out of my collection. I don't think it's going to take, I mean, any of those games I've mentioned out of my collection. It just does things differently, and the blend is just really great. So 90% of people out there who do games are going to like this game, I think. Um, and I would suggest it to nearly everybody. If you like Euro games, I suggest it for you. I think you should try and find a way to play it or go out and find a copy, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, no guarantees on that. We don't do that, but I do think that that's my opinion. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and again, it's it's clearly in my top 100 games. Like it better than any other medium plus weight game from 2018. Might be my favorite from 2018 altogether. There is one other game that um, you can find a review of it, uh, on the, our YouTube channel. Australia is very good as well. This one's right there with it. They're very different games, so it's hard for me to say which one I like better, but both excellent games. This one probably even edges out Australia. So just love this game. I think everybody should get a chance to play it uh, and enjoy it. Uh, so I've been rambling now maybe a little bit, but I want to just finish with this. If you did like this video or if you want to check out our other half of the combo, Jason, uh, he does a lot of like Kickstarter previews or things that you may not see anywhere else. Like he does the stuff that like the big reviewers won't touch. So um, he does those things and he found some really great things last year that were just like, man, we're the only people that reviewed this game. I can't believe that because this is such a good game. I think Jason was the first one to look at Caper, which I think is a really excellent game. Um, so subscribe to see all that stuff. Find our podcast. Our podcast is like funnier than this. Like we just are silly and stupid. Jason and I have pretty good chemistry. Um, anyway. Thanks for watching. Please sub if you'd like to, I guess. Um, that's the most wishy-washy plea ever, I guess. But thank you, and keep gaming.